Richard's Hospital. Sir. Yes? I will not open. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Oh. Okay. Ah. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Here it is. Thank you. Thank you. My discipline. So this club. Okay. Ah. Cheers. Ah, oh, cheers. <laughs> Hi everyone, is this not the scenario that comes to your mind when you are asked for medical emergencies? In ENT you might even be thinking about Strider, isn't it? No, I am not going to talk about Strider on this beautiful day. What is the speciality of today? Today is World Hearing Day. And today's World Hearing Day is celebrated with the theme of Ear and Hearing Care for All. Now, what I'm going to talk about is an important topic and what is that? It is sudden sensorineural hearing loss. That is, when you are having a hearing loss suddenly, it could be conductive or sensorineural. If it is conductive, it is not an emergency. But if it is a sudden sensorineural hearing loss, it is a medical emergency. Why and how are we going to treat the condition? I will be talking about it today. So, what do you mean by sudden sensorineural hearing loss? First of all, we have to define the condition. For that, you have to remember three. What is that? By definition, new onset 30 decibel sensorineural hearing loss in more than or equal to three contiguous frequencies occurring in less than three days. That is what is meant by sudden sensorineural hearing loss. So, it is an interplay of the number 3, isn't it? That is, there is new onset 30 decibel sense neural hearing loss and it should be more than or equal to 3 contiguous frequencies occurring in less than 3 days. So, the number 3 has something important related to hearing, right? We have got 3 ear ossicles and also World Hearing Day is celebrated on 3rd day of 3rd month of every year. And so today we are celebrating World Hearing Day. Now, what are the causes of sudden sensorineural hearing loss? First of all, it could be due to a direct trauma like this. That is, temporal bone fracture can result in sudden sensorineural hearing loss. And also, acoustic trauma can result in sudden sensorineural hearing loss. And barotrauma can also result in sudden sensorineural hearing loss. And even trauma due to an electric shock can result in sudden sensorineural hearing loss. So, these are the various types of trauma that results in sudden sensorineural hearing loss. If there is no history of trauma, then you have to think about autoimmune causes, especially if it is bilateral. Now, what are the autoimmune conditions that can result in sudden sensorineural hearing loss? Cogan syndrome, SLE, then PAN or polyarteritis nodosa. All these are conditions that result in a sudden sensorineural hearing loss, even Wegner's granulomatosis, which is nowadays known as granulomatosis with polyangitis, also result in sudden sensorineural hearing loss, relapsing polychondritis. These are the various causes that you have to think about. And then you have to think about various infections. Among the infections, viral infections are the most important cause that you have to know about. And what are the various virus infections? That is herpes simplex virus, herpes zoster virus can cause sudden sensorineural hearing loss and apart from that mumps virus, measles virus can cause sudden sensorineural hearing loss. So these are the various infections and apart from the viral infections you also have to think about bacterial meningitis, toxoplasmosis, Lyme's disease especially in area which is endemic for Lyme's disease. Okay, you have to think about that condition because it is readily treatable by giving antibiotics. Now. Uh, there are certain neoplasms that can result in sudden sensorineural hearing loss. 10 percentage of cases, patients have uh, a vestibular schwannoma causing sudden sensorineural hearing loss. So, these are the various CP angle tumors that result in sudden sensorineural hearing loss. That is schwannoma, meningioma, congenital cholesteatoma, 
cholesterol granuloma and hemangioma. Now, there are certain drugs that can result in sudden sense neural hearing loss. What are they? You can easily remember it as A, B, C, D and E. That is aminoglycosides, antibiotics, anti-inflammatory drugs, antimalarials. All these come under A. Beta blockers, cisplatin, other cytotoxic chemotherapeutic drugs, diuretics, deferoxamine and aflornithine which constitute B, C, D and E. So, you can easily remember the drugs as anybody can dance, right? A, B, C, D and along with that you have to include E as well. Okay. Now, what are the other causes? Even general anesthesia can result in sudden sense neural hearing loss. And there are certain vascular causes that you have to remember. What are these vascular causes? That is VK syndrome, sickle cell anemia, polycythemia rubra vera and also you have to think about stroke and also history of any bypass surgery. What is the other category of conditions that you have to think about? You have to think about metabolic conditions like diabetes mellitus, hypothyroidism and also other miscellaneous causes like developmental anomalies example enlarged vestibular aqueduct and also about multiple sclerosis which is the condition of Vidya Bal in the movie Guru and also about sarcoidosis. Then you have to think about pseudo hypoechosis or malingering as you can see in this movie Punjabi house or its Hindi remake Chup Chup Ke. Okay. So, these are also conditions that you have to think about when a patient presents you with sudden sense neural hearing loss. Okay. Now, how will you remember the various etiology of sudden sense neural hearing loss? You can easily remember by the code I am Tovino. Okay, I am Tovino. I for infectious, A for autoimmune, M for metabolic, T for trauma, O for autotoxicity, V for vascular, I for idiopathic, N for neoplasms and the final O for other miscellaneous. Okay, if you remember this code, you will be able to remember all the etiology of sudden sense neural hearing loss. What do you mean by idiopathic sudden sense neural hearing loss? If you are thoroughly investigating for the cause of sudden sense neural hearing loss and unable to find it, it is termed as idiopathic. It could be viral or vascular or it could be autoimmune and heat shock protein 70 is one protein that is found to be elevated in the autoimmune idiopathic cause of sudden sense neural hearing loss. This can be easily remembered by looking at this picture. You can see how Katapa, who is 70 year old, is giving Bahubali the shock of his life. He is meant to protect uh, Bahubali, right? And still he is killing him off. And so it is autoimmune. And you can see the background of heat there. So, heat shock protein 70 is supposed to be increased in autoimmune sudden sense neural hearing loss. And activation of NF kappa B is also uh, said to cause idiopathic sudden sense neural hearing loss along with cochlear membrane rupture and in certain conditions menius disease also has been said to cause idiopathic sudden sense neural hearing loss. What is the usual history? Patient tells you that he wakes up in the morning suddenly to find that he has lost hearing in one ear. That is one common history. Sometimes patient may be complaining more of tinnitus than hearing loss. Sometimes the patient might not even have noticed. He might have thought it is just an ear block. Okay, and he will be going to the uh, otorhinolaryngologist only much later. Anyway, you have to ask for careful history of air travel. Frequent air travel history is something which you must not miss. And along with that, history of scuba diving has to be asked for because it can result in barotrauma. And also, uh, history of straining on passing stool or history of uh, lifting heavy weight. History of acoustic trauma has also to be taken. History of fever which is suggestive of some viral or bacterial infection has to be taken into consideration and also a careful drug history to analyze for the various drugs which can result in certain sensual hiring loss has to be looked for like the A, B, C, D and E I told you right. You have to look for history of any such drug intake. Now according to the American Academy of Otorhinolaryngology and Head and Neck Surgery there are certain things that you have to look for according to their 2019 guidelines and they have put it as key action statements and according to the second key action statement they say that in a patient with sudden sense neural hearing loss you have to uh, take thorough history and physical examination 
and you have to look for bilateral hearing loss recurrent episodes and look for focal neurological findings because focal neurological finding is suggestive of stroke and also uh, when you are having bilateral hearing loss it is indicative of autoimmune hearing loss and when you are having low frequency hearing loss with fluctuation it is suggestive of Meniere's disease. CT head should not be taken in a patient with sudden sense neural hearing loss for the evaluation purpose. It may be taken if there is history of head trauma but not otherwise. But MRI brain has to be taken to rule out sudden sense neural hearing loss because in 10 percentage of cases it could present as sudden sense neural hearing loss. And what else can be done if there is no MRI brain available you can do an auditory brain stem response to look for features of acoustic neuroma. You should not do routine blood investigations and there is another thing that you have to do that is audiometry. It has to be done within two weeks to confirm the diagnosis. Okay, And yes MRI brain has to be taken to look for CP angle tumor and when you see an acoustic neuroma it will be visible with the ice cream cone appearance that is it will be seen as growing from the internal capsule into the CP angle. If no MRI is available, you can take auditory brainstem response to assess for features of acoustic neuroma. Now, what are the prognostic factors which affect the outcome of sudden sense neural hearing loss? The most important prognostic factor is time since onset. Earlier, the better. That is, if you are getting the patient earlier, you can start the treatment earlier and then the prognosis will be far more better. So, if you are having a, any feature of ear block, or hearing loss you have to see an ENT doctor as early as possible to rule out sudden sense neural hearing loss. Now what are the other prognostic factors if you are considering Abhishek Bachchan and Amida Bachchan who is having the worst prognosis it is Amida Bachchan who is having the worst prognosis because older the age worse the prognosis and if there is history of vertigo then also the prognosis will be worse and also you have to look for the slope of the audiometry. If it is going in a down sloping manner, it shows a bad prognosis. So these are the various prognostic factors that you have to look for. There is time since onset, age, vertigo and audiogram. Now you treat the patient. You can treat the patient by giving him prednisolone at the dose of 1 mg per kg per day. Systemic steroids may be given intra orally or as intravenous injection. Before starting steroid, you have to explain to the patient the various complications associated with steroids such as insomnia, osteoporosis and hunger along with that restlessness, glaucoma, cataract and even gastric ulcer can occur. In fear of the complications, in certain conditions like uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, hypertension, you can offer him intratympanic steroid injection that is you are injecting dexamethasone directly into the inner ear through the round window. And this is done not in cases of uh, not just in cases of uncontrolled diabetes hypertension and all it is also given as salvage treatment in patients for whom there is incomplete recovery of sudden sense neural hearing loss after giving systemic steroids. It may also be given in as first line treatment if the patient is presenting to you late and not within the 3 days. Another treatment option that can be given is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is the only other treatment option which is recommended by American Academy of Head and Neck Surgery for the treatment of sudden sensory neural hearing loss apart from systemic steroid therapy. They strongly advise against treatment with pendoxifilin, uh, then uh, carbogen inhalation, heparin, antiviral like valacyclovir and also diuretic tre treatment and treatment with beta estin or papaverin. This is given by the key action statement which say that you should not routinely prescribe antivirals, thrombolytics, vasodilators or vasoactive substances to patients with sudden sense neural hearing loss. And after treating the patient should be on routine follow up. Audiogram has to be obtained at the end of the treatment and within 6 months of completion of treatment for the purpose of follow up. If there is any residual hearing loss, he may require hearing aid along with hat or hearing assistive technology. And if the patient is having single sided deafness, he may require contralateral root nerve signals or a bone angered hearing aid. All these options have to be counseled to the patient if the patient comes with residual hearing loss at the end of follow up. 
So that is all for the very important topic sudden sense neural hearing loss. I hope you understood everything regarding this topic. I will be coming with another important topic. Until then, goodbye.